Okay, here's part two video of the power inverter that I made, and I'd like to show you it in action. Okay, and I got everything hooked up here. This is just hooked up to the 12 volts to power my little circuit board, uh, integrated circuit in there that switches these chips back and forth. So it only draws like 0 0.027 milliamps. So let's go ahead and we're going to show you how this works. And one more thing about the triodal transformer here. This one is about 300 watts. So I can get like 300 watts of power off of this little thing. Um, but you can upgrade this. You know, the more batteries you can put in series and get it up like 10 batteries up to 120 volts, you know, running through a good triodal transformer the better it's going to equal out with each other so whatever your source is it's only going to draw that from the batteries instead of pulling more current from the batteries to make up for the voltage difference this one's a little bit bigger here this one's like an 800 watt trial to transformer but it's a 62 volt input on each center tap side so and i'm only pumping 36 so that's why i have this one plugged up to it because that's the voltage range on the secondary to step it up to 120. So let's go ahead and see what this thing does. I'm going to plug this up and right now the circuit board is running. As you can see 0 0.027 that is 27 milliamps and that's all that's going to draw on that. Even when I have power running over here it's still about 26 to 27 milliamps. That's it. That's all that's going to draw. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, you can see my center tap lines here. Each side's hooked up to the coil. Then I got the center is the positive. So what I'm doing is I'm stepping up the positive, not the negative, but the positive. This stays 12 volts on that circuit. Anything more on that circuit is going to pop that integrated circuit. So you don't want to do that. So we're just stepping up the positive, linking it over, but that's staying the same through it. All right, and we're running the higher voltage. This can handle, these chips can handle, I believe, up to 70 volts each running through them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hook this up. You're going to see how bright the light is. And we got your 100 watts of light, same brightness as the other one. And as you can see here, it's, the amps actually went down. It's 25 milliamps now. Now let's go ahead and see what we got here. This is my voltmeter. It's on zero. We're going to see what the light bulb's drawing. Actually, the light bulb is drawing 0 0.77. 0 0.77 amps. Now, here's your lines going to it. That's at 0 0.38, 37, 38, each line. So we have to calculate each line. 0.36. Well, all together running, I had it at 2.88 amps when you add up both lines because it's two different circuits pulsing there. So you have to consider, multiply it by two each line. So you come up with 288 amps at 36 volt and, you know, it's, it's beautiful. Beautiful power coming to this thing. And everything just stays cold to the touch on the transistors. They don't, they're, they're cold to the touch. They don't even get warm of putting out the power here. And like I said, the batteries, the more that you use, the less current you're going to be drawing from the batteries to power your source, whatever you're powering. So if you say like you had a 5,000 watt inverter, 5,000 watt trial to transformer to power things, and you can equal the power out to 120 volt input pulsing it, each side 120 volts with 10 batteries, you're not going to use any current but the source whatever it draws off the batteries and that's a big savings on current for the batteries and with no stress to power your load and these transistors don't even you know heat up so let me know what you think about this thanks for watching